The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, in 3D and at a higher frame rate. Bilbo Baggins is chosen by Gandalf the Grey Wizard to be the 14th, I believe, member of the party of Thorin Oakshield and his dwarven comrades to reclaim their home. And along the way, Bilbo's awkward, gentlemanly, polite ways will be challenged by the gruffer, perhaps less cultured or differently cultured dwarves. And the adventure will, of course, also force him to determine if he is really ready for, you know, leaving the Shire and being able to make it out there. This film is really mainly for those who want more of the world that we see, in the, the world of Middle-earth, that we see in the Lord of the Rings films. It is not necessary to have watched the Lord of the Rings films to see this, it doesn't spoil anything, there are a few hints in this towards Lord of the Rings, but you can easily watch this without having seen those. It has a lot of charm, it's very entertaining, and it's easily something you could bring your kids to see, more so than the Lord of the Rings films, and it's, it's a simpler, it's, it's more of a fairy tale than an epic fantasy, once again, thanks to Kermit Head for clearing that up for me, go sub him. And really if you if that's not enough for you if you really want plot and progression then this is not a movie for you and it's really just that simple you're going to find it way over long i personally can think of a lot of things that could have been cut to make it move faster but i can't think of anything i wouldn't miss I love a lot of the characters in this, and it's much funnier than the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy put together and trying to be funnier, and again, lighter. The 3D is highly atmospheric, it's very much the Avatar kind of 3D where you feel like you're right there. It doesn't take advantage of the 3D very much, it doesn't throw very much stuff directly at you. And the higher frame rate, whilst it can induce sickness in some motion sickness, I believe, from the twice, from the frame rate being twice of the normal. It also leads to a smoother image for those of us not, you know, fortunate enough to not be affected. And once you get used to it, it'll take your eye 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes of the film to adjust to it really does feel very real. You feel like they're right in front of you, except for some parts that feel a little fakey, digital-y. But the, the first 15 minutes, it is going to look a little like it, the film was sped up or something. It's a great tour around Middle-earth again. We get to see several nice and distinct, credible lands. We get a lot of creatures with very creative designs. The dialogue is highly memorable. There are there's a ton of character and a richness of detail, and every character has a personality and feel like they're actually there. There are literally like 13 dwarves, and just the and there's just the main characters, and there are other characters along the way and everyone feels like they're there and they have something to do. No, no one is just there because, well, you know, for, for no real reason. And again, that's what this is really for. If you want character and more of the world, this is for you. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below. It's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.